Senate asked the federal government to withhold allocations to local councils not democratically elected. And in Ondo State, Speaker of the Ondo House of Assembly, Ola Mede Oladiji, has revealed President Tinumbu asked Ayedatiwa to tender on dated resignation letter. I am Gola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. The Senate has asked the federal government to withhold statutory allocations to any local government councils not democratically elected. The upper chamber unanimously resolved that this move would deter the dictatorial tendencies of any state governor. This resolution comes against the backdrop of a motion moved by Senator Abba Moro on the urgent need to halt the erosion of democracy vis-à-vis -vis the dissolution of elected councils in Benue State. The lawmakers argued that the placement of caretaker committees to replace elected councils is an aberration, undemocratic, and a breach of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, has amended. Joining us live is Nasarawa Chairman of Association of Local Government of Nigeria, Algon al Aji Aminu Muazu. My, my fat, we go on a short break, we'll soon be back. Welcome back. We are technical issues connecting with our, our first guest. We moved to the second topic for the day, and we are very grateful to our guest who is uh, literally, literally on as we speak. The Speaker of the Ondo State House of Assembly, Olamide Oladiji, has revealed that as part of efforts at ending the political crisis in the state, President Bola Tinubu had asked the Deputy Governor, Loki Aye Datiwa, to tender an undated resignation letter. And despite moves by President Tinubu and the leadership of all progressives, Congress APC, to resolve the political crisis currently rocking governance in that state, the issues seem to be piling up by the day as the State Assembly has demanded the resignation letter of Aye Datiwa as proposed by the President. Joining us live is Kennedy Peretai, PDP Publicity Secretary, Ondo State. Honorable Peretai, good to have you guesting on Plus Politics. Thank you so much. Good evening. But uh, the name is pronounced Perete. Perete. Uh, thank Perete. you very much. I was just I was just about saying. I hope I've not murdered the name. I really would wouldn't like to be to be accused of murder. Okay. You know. Okay. <laughs> thank you very it's much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What is happening in your state? Just when we thought we had made some steps in the direction of progress. Uh, the crisis seems to to be recalibrating and uh, moving in the direction of this combobulation. What is happening? Well, um, you will recall that um, immediately they returned from Abuja, I issued a statement to say that what President Tinubu has done amounts to window dressing, that the issues have not been addressed. And that as long as the governor of Ondo State, uh, Roti Merkeredolu, remains in hiding, as it were, it means there is not going to be respite. And the siege uh, was still on. But two days after, we saw the, the first uh, fireworks, you know? The 
State Assembly was said to have been, uh, they are said to have received a list of uh, uh, nominees for uh, to be council chairman and vice chairman. And we were told reliably that the deputy governor was not in law of it. But before we knew it, we went to court. The court did not give us a date. But we, we, we actually issued a statement saying that what they did was an illegality because as far as the constitution of Nigeria is concerned, local governments are supposed to be administered by democratically elected officials. That is section 7 of the Nigeria Constitution 1999 as amended. But they have not done that. Yesterday, what the High Court in Ondo State gave us an order restraining them from swearing the electoral chairman. But we're told that by around 7, 8 p.m., they hurriedly are going to the Coco Conference Hall and swore them in. So we have not seen the last of this crisis. It has just started as far as I'm concerned. As the official opposition party, we know this is the presidential system of government and we don't quite have uh, something akin to official opposition party as you have in the parliamentary system of government. But the PDP would ordinarily be referred to as the leading opposition party in the state. What are the options that the PDP uh, has at this juncture beyond noise making? You must have some some constitutional remedies. You, do you have members in the State House of Assembly, don't you? Yeah, we are. We are four members. You know, what we are having in those states is um, quite embarrassing. And um, statesmen, other statesmen, like Chief Ruben Fashion, have intervened. They have written to the President. We have also provided options. What can be done? First, if Ayeda, uh, if uh, Protein Agregolu cannot resume, as is the case now, we have also proposed that he should honorably resign because, as it is now, Undo State is drifting. Nobody is in charge of the affairs of Undo State. There is no governor, there is no deputy governor. The, the, the third the rank, which is the Speaker of Assembly, has been embroiled in a crisis with the deputy governor in the state. So, but the, the House of Assembly is operating, you know, not as on the basis of parties. Once they enter plenary, or once they enter the one that they call executive session, according to them, they operate together. So it is not the, it's not the matter of whether this person is PDP or this person is... I, I, I would suppose, I would suppose that statement that once they enter... Uh, uh, executive session, the approach together is, a, is an indictment of, of your party. That your members, oh, no. that your members in the House of Assembly are lacking ideological commitment. They have no respect I'm, for the I'm Nigerian Constitution, that. and they go in cahoot with the with the uh, majority party that is seemingly slapping the Constitution black and blue. No, I've not said that. If you remember the processes that were involved, at a particular time, 11 members of the 26 members of assembly were opposed to the impeachment. The four members, the PDP members in that, in that assembly are part of the 11. So we cannot say that they are working together with the APC majority. I've not said that. What I said was that at a time when some lists were making the rounds about signatures, our uh, one of the members from the PDP, that is the minority leader of the House, said that the list that was seen in public domain with the signature was the list they signed for attendance in one of their meetings. It was not for impeachment. And but as it were, it was difficult for him to come to the public and make that known so that it should not be a case of the majority suspending the minority, which happens all the time. We saw it in the other state where the governor made sure that some members of the assembly were suspended. And for a period of almost three and a half years, you also need some tact so that you don't get expelled, you don't get removed from parliament, and you'll be helpless, even though they don't have such powers. So that is exactly what I mean, that when they enter into a session, they operate as a body, not as this one is PDP or this one is KPC, not because they are collaborating with the so-called majority. 
However, the Constitution also has a provision that empowers the lower house of the National Assembly in a crisis situation like this, especially where you have an aberrant House of Assembly to, uh, to take over the powers of the State House of Assembly. And I would suppose at this juncture, the members of the PDP, both from Ondo State and at large in the National Assembly, especially the House of Representatives, ought to be articulating the implementation of that provi provision now. Don't you think so? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the issues are still being pursued because there is a provision, a, a constitutional provision, which says that if the governor is unable to perform the duties of his office or the president, beyond a particular point, maybe beyond 21 days, I think section 190, subsection 2, you know, it says that the deputy governor is supposed to be empowered through the doctrine of uh, necessity to act in the position of the governor, which is what we have asked the Ulusian House Assembly to do, and they have not done. But in this case, what is clear to the public is that the speaker of the Ulusian House Assembly is a master of impunity, is somebody who has made up his mind that he will stand against the will of the people, the wishes of the people, and continue to take instructions from wherever source he's taking this instruction from. For example, how on earth can a speaker say that he was constituting critical committees when the constitution clearly states that elections and democratically elected officials are going to run the affairs of the local government? So is it not the case of the lawmaker breaking the law? So, Aladdin has clearly shown himself as incompetent and against the wishes of the people. So, we are still in court in several I, 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 I hope, uh, Kennedy, I hope you know the difference between what is called politicking and real politic. Uh, uh, Kennedy, any reasonable Nigerian will agree with you that uh, that. Um, mountains of illegalities uh, are, are literally being, you know, are, are metaphorically being built in Undo State. But the problem that an average, reasonable, well educated, well enlightened Nigerian would have is that what beyond the histrionics of talk, 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 and talk is cheap, what is a party like PDP doing? Are you taking recourse to the law? Because as we speak, the Speaker of the House of Assembly and the controlling party in the House of Assembly are not bigger than the rule of law. And the only machinery that you have to articulate the effectiveness of the rule of law, we don't seem to see you guys articulating it. So is, that, is it just going to be... Is it just going to be you be making, you be speaking grammar, speaking grammar, and the illegality will be going on? Let me explain to you, please. Now, you said whether there is a difference between politics and real politics. I don't know about that. But what I can tell you is that when this matter started, apart from beyond issuing statements, beyond issuing press statements, we staged a protest in which I'm sure you are aware that Armand personal carrier was moved to our office to seal it up by the Commissioner of Police for days. And yesterday, we, we have a court injunction restraining the, the government of Ondo State, anybody for that matter, from swearing in local government administrators or local government chairman. At night, at about 8 o'clock, 9, 9 p.m. in the night, in the night, they went and swore in these people against a court order that is before them that were, they were served with this injunction. So when you are talking about people that are fragmentary, you know, stamping on the constitution of Nigeria and stamping on the interests of the people, what else can we do? We are in court, even in this case of the assembly, uh, um, of the assembly and the swearing in of this uh, illegal um, local government chairman. Then as per enforcing the law to making on those state benefit from governance, because since the state, the act of the, the chief of the state is breaking the power, nobody is in charge of anything. 
So we are trying to go to court, but the courts don't. We are not. Um, we are not the judges. It is what they give us. Even this matter that was decided yesterday, we filed on the thirteenth of November. We didn't get a date until yesterday. So it is be, what we can do is just within the law. The policemen came and said, "Our we cannot even proceed on a legitimate protest." And our rights as, as Nigerians is a shrine, is constitutionally granted guarantee that we can demonstrate, we can move freely. But they stopped us. We went to court, but they said since they have or they released our office, we are free to go. You know, so these are the things we are talking. State protests, go to court, approach the court. I hear that you are now. I say, come and be acting up. Or go to a catch wherever he is and bring him to another state. As we speak, we don't even know where he is. The people that are managing him have not told us where Akechi is. And for more than six months, nobody has seen this man in public space. What are we talking about? Well, we a, a, a couple, of, a couple of weeks ago, about three or four weeks ago, we saw, we saw pictures of Southwest APC governors in a camaraderie session with him, reportedly in his house in Ibadan. Uh, but that does not, uh, it, it's, you know, what is happening in those states is saddening. For a man who, for the better part of his uh, adult life, had uh, epitomized, had, and I'm choosing my words carefully, had epitomized uh, the rule of law, the integrity of the law, to be the chief dramatis persona now that illegal, all these illegalities are built around, it's saddening. But you know what? Politics sometimes, the way you, you partisans play it, and none of you can be said to be innocent. I, I, I'm sitting there now feeling frustrated as a Nigerian, feeling abused, and yet, you know, I can't blame you. You, you. You've tried the way of the courts. Uh, the speaker reportedly, allegedly, from what you said now, deliberately disrespected the order of the court yesterday. So, so you told us allegedly. I'm not. I'm not affirming it. But what else can be done? This See, is madness. Has to be. This madness has to be tackled. What, what, I heard that, uh, what um, the Speaker of the House of Assembly and those working in Kahoot with him are asking for is anarchy. Because in a state where laws are not obeyed, laws are put in place for the order of society, for the good of well-being of the state. So in a situation whereby somebody flagrantly abuses the law, he tramples on the law, and says, what can you do? It means we're asking for anarchy. If a man slaps you, maybe you go to court. They look, somebody has I, 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 I wouldn't want to encourage you, Kennedy, especially for <laughs> somebody who owns a very lofty office of, uh, uh, you know, a, a very lofty office in a major political party uh, to speak as though you are encouraging violence. Uh, <laughs> But I'm saying, even, even if the president definitely says so, those who make a uh, peaceful change impossible, um, you know, make a violent change inevitable, you know? That's what I'm saying, that it's an invitation I, I, I'm, to... I'm, like, basically, I'm basically counseling, especially yourself, that you must be very, very determined not to be seen, to be encouraging violence, number one. You no, must I have not speak, said so. You must I'm speak. only stating the obvious. I'm no, only stating no, no, the obvious. I, I, I don't really, I, I'm not condemning you, but I have a duty too to make sure that you are made to realize that some of your, uh, some of your emotive pronouncements can be misconstrued by those who are ill-educated, who are not as exposed as you are, uh, and uh, that is why it is incumbent on me to make sure that I let you realize that you have a duty, especially to a system that you are profiting from,
to be very circumspect in your use of language. No, what do you mean by profiting from? Is this situation you're profiting from in you, what sense? Uh, I'm a Nigerian. I'm, I'm not in government. No, in you, government. you are. You are. You are the spokesperson of one of the two major parties in Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> yes, in the state of anarchy, there wouldn't be room. For, oh, for you to even see, I, I think it's, it's, I think it's, better, it's better that you get me clearly. It's better that you get me clearly. What I say, those who make peaceful change impossible. I'm familiar with the victim. I'm familiar no, with the victim. I'm, said, I'm, I'm familiar with the victim, Kennedy, and I know, I know how. I, 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 I'm, I'm equally, I'm equally very, very angry. I must be very honest with you. And, and, and it's so much, so much. Uh, painful because on a previous occasion that Aketi stood for the integrity of the constitution and our laws he actually counseled somebody who was in the same situation that he is, he is in he is now, now to resign if Aketi resigns today he will not, he will not be in plenary it will not be. Uh, it will not be hungry. It will not lack anything that will that will still protect his life and give him the dignity of an upper class life in Nigeria. So why are people now determined to push him in the direction of stigmatizing his legacy? Because at this juncture, uh, 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 his legacy as as a human being. He's practically been, been stigmatized. I think it's about time members of his family, close members of his family, and people, the anger zone, who think they are profiting from this, they are rubbishing his, 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 his legacy. My opinion, it doesn't make it uh, this thing, but this is saddening, very saddening. Uh, it's unfortunate. It's quite, it's quite unfortunate that on those states, in this state of affairs, because those who is... Um, you know, populated by very cerebral and uh, people who are well to do in every walk of life. But what we, where we are find ourselves is quite unfortunate. And we are using opportunity to plead with those that are holding on those states by the jugular that they should release on those states so that we can have peace in those states, we can have governance in those states the way it's ought to be. Anybody can be ill. Nobody is challenging the fact that. Uh, Akedi, why should you be ill? No, why not? Anybody can be ill. But the constitution provides for a situation like this. So once it happens, there is a constitutional safeguard which must lash on to for the, for the state to move forward, which is what some people are holding back, including the speaker of the Lusawa Assembly. For example, how can anybody tell a man that was duly elected to bring a, a letter of resignation that is not dated? Where on earth is it hard? Where where has that kind of thing ever happened before? It's ridiculous, and it's actually making on those look like, you know, people don't even know what they are doing. And it just a few people are doing all of this. And we are using the opportunity to plead with them that it will be in their own very best system because as posterity in everything we do, as history, I want to record for everybody which role the leaders played in this drama. And we are just doing our own part as much as we are able to do using the law as our guide. I, 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 this issue of uh, IA that were having been made by the president to sign an undated letter of resignation, um, I, I, one does not know how far that is true, but I just pray it's not true. Uh, and the reason why I pray it's not true is that uh, 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 His Excellency, the president, may be walking a very, very thin line of decency on that on that subject for a man who for you know for a, a time in his life stood against the gorgon medusa of autocracy fought for democracy had to go to exile for democracy being privy i, I just pray it's not true I, I, and you but, see i don't suppose uh, people like you too, or uh, people. No, no, the, speaker, making... the speaker said so. Speaker of the Dose of Assembly said so in plenary. It is in black and white. He said so. He's on tape. 
I, I'm not the person saying it. I, 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 I understand. I understand your. I understand your point, Kennedy. But uh, at this juncture, uh, I, I am not one that respects uh, that uh, that speaker so much anymore because uh, he could say anything. A character like that could say anything to either want to bamboozle uh, those who are not. You know, we are not standing with him or wanting to uh, machinate, you know, his own selfish ambition. Because all this, if, if, to any pol political tea leaf reader, all this is about the ambitions, the vaulting ambitions of, of these characters. Or am I wrong? Because, very correct, sir. What I say. In some of the statements I issued earlier, was that I expected Mr. President, who is also a veteran in this business of politics, to know that what is at stake is the 2024 elections coming up in Ando State, who will succeed Aketi in the APC. So it is a fireworks that is connected with who becomes the successor to Aketi to pick the APC ticket. Now, whatever it was, that you are his deputy governor and he has a constitutional duty or responsibility to take over from Aketi if Aketi is incapacitated in this manner. But those who are also eyeing the governorship seat know that if I that you are becomes acting governor, they will be at a disadvantage in the contest for the APC ticket. This is the underlying factor. This is what is behind all the fire. I, I, I hope. I hope. I hope some of those who advise the president will uh, will remember that uh, uh, they literally, including the president, literally took to the streets when uh, it was necessary to help articulate to help articulate the emergence of the then vice president, good luck, Billy Jonathan, uh, to, to, uh, to have the constitution work as it ought to work for him. Uh, and now, uh, Kennedy, how, how do you want to end this? We really have to go now. Yeah, let me, let me, let me say that the problems that we have in those states are being inflamed by the, the president himself. Because if some people are becoming difficult to deal with, they are refusing court orders, you know, he has that wit, he has that, he has that act, he has that strength. He's the leader of acting the APC, he's the president of the country. So he should have been able to streamline this operation, especially because after the year I do a Jonathan incident, the National Assembly inserted this section into the Constitution that if a situation like this happens, that the uh, doctrine of necessity be invoked as in section 190, subsection 2. So there would have been no ambiguity as to what. Imagine a president calling a meeting of that meeting and a is not able to attend. That in itself is a statement. It means that if it were not uh, uh, something serious that was holding him down. Well, okay, Kennedy, that Kennedy I, I, I feel you, as they say on the streets. I, I really pray that, uh, you know, uh, we always th throw, throw uh, Christianism and Pentecostalism into it in Nigeria. But, but it's about time this this unedifying situation in Ondo State ended. About time it ended. Thank you very much, Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you, so you for, for gracing the, the show.